So here at the Bearded Home Cook, we have been postponed on doing our second episode of Barbecue Tips and Tricks, thanks to a lot of lousy weather. So we've got a break in the weather this week. I'm super excited to bring you one of my absolute favorites, brisket. Get ready. Okay, so it's brisket time, and there's a few things in front of me, and I kind of want to start on the simple part first, which is the rub because any good slow and low meat, especially in the Carolinas, and of course brisket's Texan, but that's okay, you're gonna start with a great dry rub. So what we're gonna do is start with a third of a cup of coarse ground black pepper. You can actually see how coarse that is. We don't wanna use the powdered stuff out of a can because that with a just regular table salt is gonna get very pasty. And when you put it onto a brisket, which could cost you $60, uh, it's gonna create this kind of hard crust that's not going to turn into a bark like you're expecting. Instead, it's gonna flake off in big pieces and it just doesn't leave any really fun character or flavor to the outside of it. So with a coarse pepper and then of course a kosher salt, we're gonna have a much more textured crust on the outside of the brisket. Now what's neat is as we stir these up, I mean you can tell it's coarse, which is great. The only fine thing we put in there is cinnamon. And this is my own little kind of secret ingredient because I do a red wine barbecue sauce. If you remember from the original barbecue tips and tricks, it's a great red wine barbecue sauce. And I really feel like cinnamon on beef is sort of my little hidden secret. The other nice part about it, of course, is that when you add the red wine and the cinnamon and the beef, it all really just comes together to be one beautiful combination. So we've got this rub ready to go. Now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and start trimming down our brisket. So what you want is about a half an inch of fat. Let me turn this this way just a little bit. So you can see the meat and the muscle, it's all right here. You don't want such a thick fat cap that you have to try and cook through it and render it because the fat is one of the most delicious parts of the brisket. And if you don't make it thin enough to cook down in the course of this 10, 12 hour process, you're gonna have this chewy white fat on the meat and white fat is always a problem. So we wanna get this down to where it's only about a half of an inch. So you wanna find the sharpest knife you have because this is some serious fat, no joke. I am using a boning knife just to try and help keep the process going. So you can see, I mean, I've taken off a good three quarters of an inch there. Be very careful because obviously if you're using one of your very sharp knives, it'd be super simple to take off a little bit of a finger too. If you get down under a half of an inch, it's okay. Again, we're gonna rub, we're gonna get all kinds of flavor but fat really helps keep the moisture in the brisket during the process. And if you've ever had somebody's first or second attempt at a brisket, it's usually pretty dry. I know my first two were horrible. I finally got it right on my third one and was pretty excited because I had a certified barbecue judge tell me it was in the top three briskets he had ever eaten. So I take that as a responsibility to help everybody make a better brisket. If you recall on Instagram, I posted some pictures. You would be shocked at how many people reached out and asked for tips. So that is what got this idea that we were gonna come back to barbecue, especially because we get some great weather here. So I'm gonna keep on doing this for just a few more minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save you the boredom and I'll show you the finished cut of meat here in just a minute. I'm back. Okay, so one thing you're gonna notice is I put a paper towel underneath my cutting board. These don't bleed a lot while you're trimming. There's just, it's such a well-aged piece of meat, but you do want it to pick up any of the extra moisture so that you're not sliding all over the counter. But I flipped the brisket over, and this is an area I want you to look for. So you've got your flatter side down here, and then where it gets thicker, there's a very hard, hard section of fat. You really, really, really want to dig into this and get as much of that off as you can, because when it's that dense, it's not going to render well. And again, watch your fingers. But the idea is just try to get as much as you can. You can leave a little, but I mean, I'm taking off three quarters of an inch. I've already done this area twice and there was still some. I'm probably about as low as I'm going to go there. I don't want to dig out too much of the meat because again, we want to eat it. As we flip over, that also applies right here in this pocket. So we wanna go ahead and trim that out. I've taken out over an inch from this section right here and there's probably about a quarter to three eighths of an inch in there. So I'm just gonna let that go. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it in a pan and rub it. But what I want you to see is this here is probably about two pounds of fat taken off. So what starts out as around a 13 pound brisket's now down to 11. 
So your cooking time is based on your cooking weight. So the weight does change. If you're not comfortable guessing at how much that is based on your experience level, get a small scale, work it out from there. But the idea is you want to put into the smoker something that's in the 10 to 12 pound range. So you're going to start with one that's probably 12 to 14 pounds. I try to opt for 12 and a half to 13 because these black Angus seem to be a little bit on the leaner side. This one, not so much. Then you're going to go ahead and grab an aluminum pan or any kind of a pan that you're good with roasting in. We're going to pick her up, plop it in, and then just start applying our rub. I mean, this is really high tech here. So again, our goal is homemade easy. So we're talking about a three ingredient rub, a single cut of meat. I mean, really, if we try hard, we can make this easy for you. And so what I'm going to do on the website, I'm actually going to share how to do it in a smoker, how to do it in a grill with indirect heat, and of course, how to do it in your oven. Because not everybody has a smoker, nor does everybody want to go outside and smoke. As it turns out, we do have some rain in the forecast this weekend, so I'm probably going to be battling that later. I've moved my uh, umbrella from the chairs to the smoker just to give myself a little bit of coverage when I need it. So let's hope I don't, but you never know. And again, this is called a rub. Make sure you rub it. And you wanna get it into any of those pockets like I was talking about on this side, because again, wherever it is, it's gonna be seasoned nicely. And if you miss a spot, it's just not gonna taste as good. That's probably the piece you say for your mother-in-law. Okay, so. We have just about got this baby all rubbed. Now something that's super, super important when you're dealing with large pieces of meat, don't try to use your run of the mill foil. You're gonna have to actually purchase the long foil. So again, even for a pan like this, we wanna go ahead and pull out a nice long sheet and then hopefully you've got room in your refrigerator because this thing is not small. We're gonna just cover it up Put it in the refrigerator overnight. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, we're gonna fire up that smoker and we're gonna put this baby out there and let's have some fun. So I'll see you back in the morning. Get some sleep. Mm. What do you mean morning? No, it's not morning yet. I can't sleep either. So let's talk about wood for a minute. So the one thing that's super, super important whenever you're gonna smoke a meat is wood selection. So the more delicate the meat, the lighter the wood, in my opinion. Tons of people have varying opinions on wood. You're never gonna get the same story out of anybody. So let's just kind of cover what I do because hey, this is my show. I like to use apple wood chips and hickory wood chips when I make a brisket. If I'm doing pork, no hickory. I just stick with apple. Reason being, apple's got a nice soft wood flavor to it. The smoke is a little bit lighter. It picks up a little residual sweetness as would a cherry wood. Apple has just been a big, big favorite of mine because I've smoked bacon and pork belly and different things with apple wood, so that's my go-to. North Carolina, of course, has hickory wood indigenous, so why wouldn't I want to use it? But the other nice part about hickory wood is you smell it and you just, it reminds you of bacon. And the idea is we want to give the bark a wonderful bacony flavor while we smoke very gently and softly because we're going to be doing this for quite a while, which leads me to the next conversation because how early are you supposed to get up? Well, it all depends on the size of the meat. So cooking time to me is from start to finish, including rest. So if you've ever made a nice steak, I am sure you take it out of the pan or off of the grill and you set it aside for 10 minutes. If you don't, when you cut through it, all of the juices run out and the steak gets gray. Brisket is the same way. Heck, pork butt and shoulders and anything else you're gonna smoke, you all need to rest. So with brisket, the ideal rest time is two hours. Minimum rest time is one. So I'm gonna have about an 11 pound piece going in. I'm gonna put 11 hours to it. So nine active heat and two resting heat. And let me explain this a little bit. So with brisket, if you look online, there's a lot of different views on how to rest it, what to wrap it in, put it in a cooler, put it in this. Listen, if your oven is on, and you turn it off, your oven stays warm and slowly drops temperature. If your smoker is on and you turn it off, same philosophy, it's slowly gonna drop temperature. So when you get to your fully cooked temperature, just turn it off. Let it sit there for two hours. 
It's going to have a probe in it. I've got a sensor over here. What you don't want it to do is get below 145, 150 degrees. So I'm going to watch it, but you'll be surprised. This thing will stay 160, 170 after two hours resting. But what it's doing is it's slowly allowing those juices to get back into the fat and the tissues and really, really make a sumptuous slice of brisket. And if you don't believe me, wait till you see it tomorrow. You're going to be impressed. So now you can go to sleep. Okay, we're outside. Your neighbors are probably still in bed or maybe drinking coffee. We're listening to the birds chirp, and I'm great with that. So I've just turned this down to 250 because that's going to be our cooking temperature for the first half. And outside here, we've got a couple of things going on. So I've got my brisket with the coarse pepper, kosher salt, a little bit of cinnamon. I've got a preset slice across this way. So I've scored it, not too deep, just about a half of an inch, because after this has been smoked and it's got a nice bark on it, it's impossible to tell which way the grain goes. And of course, when you're slicing brisket, you slice against the grain. So let's give ourselves an advantage when it comes out and be able to see it. You'll also notice I have a meat probe in the thickest portion of the meat because when, once the meat goes inside, we do not want to open this up because then you're gonna fluctuate your temperature. You're really gonna take things out of control. We want to have a perfect temperature of 250 cooking for at least the first four hours. This will help us watch what's going on without having to open the door. The other thing I have out here it's simply a cookie sheet covered in foil. There's a drip tray in the bottom of probably every smoker, including this one, but I don't want to wipe it all out at the end. I literally want to just fold up some foil and be done. If you were doing this in your oven, you would have the uh, brisket on a little rack on top of a tray like this, so why not implement it outside and make your life a little bit easier? So we're gonna go ahead and pop this baby open. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. We're gonna put the sheet pan on the bottom. Oh yeah, look at this baby. We're gonna put this puppy right above it. Oh, you can hear the sizzle. You know this is all nice and warmed up. We're gonna get this lid closed up, put this in, and go watch it from inside. A nice close zoom, two and a half hours in, internal temperature 125. Things are trucking along nicely. We'll see you back out here in about an hour and a half. Okay, so about halfway through your cook time, you're gonna hit this thing called the stall. And it's essentially when the temperature of the meat gets between 160 and 170 degrees. It's kind of like when you go out and exercise and you perspire a bit, that's to keep your body cool. Well, the meat itself is releasing some of its juices, which is normal through the cooking process, but unfortunately it helps keep it cool. And we're trying to achieve a temperature of about 200 degrees internally. So we need to do something to change that. And that's where the foil comes in. I'm gonna stretch out a piece probably about six feet and I'm gonna put the piece of brisket on it and I'm gonna wrap it. That is the Texas crutch way. You'll be shocked at how effective it is. Now, one of the benefits is I can put it right back into this smoker at this temperature and everything's gonna keep moving with the probe in it. But you also have the opportunity, if you're doing this on a grill or you're even doing it in your oven, to move it inside to the oven. Now, of course, it's 90 degrees out today. The last thing I wanna do is turn on my oven. I'm gonna keep the smoker doing its job. But this is just a really, really effective way to go ahead and continue the cooking process in a convenient location inside. And the beauty is that all of the smoke flavor that you're gonna establish on the bark has already happened. The meat's not gonna take any more smoke. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this brisket out, get it wrapped, and we're gonna keep things moving along. You need your sunglasses when you have foil out here like this. Remember, whenever you're pulling the meat probe out, it is metal and it is hot. Use a pot holder. Do not do this with your hand. I'm just gonna tuck that puppy in over there. And if you remember, we put a pan underneath the brisket. That pan is now gonna be our friend because we're gonna use it to pull the brisket off and get it up here. Ah, look at that. Man, that's beautiful. Okay. Then we're just gonna transfer this puppy to the foil. Remember, hot, hot, hot pan. We're going to put this back down inside. Close this to keep our temperature. All right, we're going to wrap this baby up. I don't know if there's any science to which side of the foil gets what, but I just tend to put the shiny side in. It doesn't really make a difference. Just tuck it in. If you have a little gap here and there, it's okay. 
honestly, if a little air escapes, it's fine. Some folks are actually using uh, butcher paper now, and they'll double wrap it to try and keep as much moisture in as possible, but the paper does still release some. The foil, it's foolproof. It's gonna work perfectly every time. This has cooled off a little bit, so I gotta find that thick spot again. Goes in super easy now because the meat is really cooking well. But again, we've got about another four to five hours to do here. We'll get this puppy back in. Ah, that was a little warm, not gonna lie. And now we have some time to kill. She's cooking away. Kept the umbrella close by today just in case because it looks like we got a little bit of storm brewing. So let's hope we get to that internal temperature of 200 here pretty soon. Take care of this. For the love of barbecue, what is going on out here? This is when a well-placed umbrella comes in very handy. We're still dealing with a thunderstorm warning. I just hit the off button. My magic number is 203. A lot of people say 200 is where you go. 203 has worked out perfectly for me because now we're just going to leave that beautiful piece of brisket right there inside the foil, inside the smoker. So as you can tell by the video, I've rested, the dog has rested, and guess what? The brisket has rested. Two hours later, it's still nice and warm because we're about to eat this thing. But I did want to point out a couple of things. One is I still can see that slight line I put in it before I put it into the smoker, so I know which way I'm going to go. But also there's this awesome thing called burnt ends. Let me grab my knife and show you here real quick. So what you would do is cut off an end section, like so. You would put it back into the smoker and allow it to cook further so that you would have these beautiful, dark, rich, smoky pieces of meat, because then each piece would actually get smoked individually. And it's such a deep, dark flavor. Add it to mac and cheese, make a sandwich with it. Heck, dunk it in some of that homemade barbecue sauce. Oh my God. But first, let's go ahead and cut this right down the middle. Give you a good shot of what this baby's gonna look like inside. Oh buddy, look at that. You can see the layering. You can see where the fat in the middle has broken down nicely. The thin layer of fat on the top has been cooked well. The bark still intact. Oh my gosh, it is so delicious. Now, again, we're going to have varying ways to do this online. So make sure you go to thebeardedhomecook.com to see the recipe, the rub, all of the instructions. Obviously, this is a long process. We haven't spent all that time on camera. Otherwise, you would have gotten sick of me and YouTube probably would have kicked us off. But remember, TheBeardedHomeCook.com will have all the tips and tricks to pull this off at home on a grill, in a smoker, in your oven. We've got you covered. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell all your friends. Make the brisket. Tell them how you learned how to do it. I'm telling you, it is worth the effort. Now it's time for me to eat. See you all later.